Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. In my last video, I was talking about the new Canon M50. Recently announced, really cool looking mirrorless from Canon. And as I said in the last video, it seems to tick off all the boxes that uh, I wanted, especially in the 90D or in just a new Canon APS-C body. Uh, it seems to have everything, 24 megapixel, really good APS-C sensor, uh, really decent AVF, really good very angle LCD, touchscreen LCD, and 4K. We finally got 4K in an APS-C body. But as I'd said in the previous video, it seems to at first glance. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to be a great camera, but after digging in some more and watching some other people's unboxings. Some people already have this camera. Actually, Peter McKinnon has it. He did an unboxing, and I was noticing he was pointing out how intense the crop was in 4K. And I didn't realize it was going to be this much of a crop. The crop is, let me double check, was, I had to go looking for it because Peter pointed out that it had a very intense 4K crop, but I don't think he knew the exact number. And I went looking and actually EOSHD.com, they have an article on there, actually a warning about the 4K mode in it. Uh, and they're a little bit concerned because it's a 2.56 times crop. So pretty heavy crop in 4K. In fact, EOSHD was pointing out that with that 15 to 45 lens, the... Um, well, he says making a wide-angle 18mm EOS M or EFS lens a 46mm equivalent for field of view. So with that 2.56 times crop, that's a hugely heavy crop. And it's going to affect vloggers and shooters who do handheld selfie type things. Um, and just it's going to affect anybody that needs a wider angle uh, when you're shooting your video. And it makes the 4K a little tricky to use in a lot of situations. What I would think we'd want to do in this situation is use the wonderful Canon 10 to 18. But even with that 2.56 times crop, you're looking at, uh, geez, what is that? Something like a, uh, I'm just doing the math in my head, I could use a calculator. But I think that basically means it's like a 25.6 millimeter. So your 10 goes all the way up to a 25, which still gives you probably wide enough to vlog with. But you're going to need that lens if you're going to be vlogging or doing interiors or in a tight situation. Uh, you might even want to go to the Sigma 8-16 to to get that extra 2 mils. Because 2 mils is a lot on the wide end. Um, so, so he was pointing that out. Uh, and that's a very heavy crop. 2.56 times. Um, it's not probably a deal killer for me or for a lot of people because I will work around it. This is still uh, largely the camera I've been waiting for from Canon. I really wish the crop wasn't so heavy, but I can't hit them too hard because they have finally given us 4K, which is a, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for 4K in an APS-C. Affordable body. This is a very affordable body at 780 US. But that is a very heavy crop. Very, very heavy crop uh, if you want to use 4K. Now, the other thing which I find very concerning, Peter pointed it out, EOS HD pointed it out, uh, and I didn't realize that from the specs, Canon didn't really seem that clear about it in their specs in their announcement but you can't use the fantastic canon dual pixel af in 4k so shooting in 4k with the canon m50 not only are we getting this serious serious 2.56 times crop in 4k you also lose dual pixel af and you could kind of notice that in peter mckinnon's video because it was the canon was uh the, the camera the M50 was not following him smoothly as you would expect from a Canon with dual pixel AF. And that was when he was using the 4K because the dual pixel AF is not available in 4K. So two big whammies using 4K on the M50. Again, I'm very happy we have 4K. I'm disappointed with the crop. I'm disappointed with the dual pixel AF. Still think I like the camera. Still may even buy one for myself. Um, there are some other things I want to know. I'd like to know what the codec is like in there. How decent is that 4K file that we're making in the M50? I don't know. It looked pretty good from Peter McKinnon's video. Peter also is very good at editing and tweaking things. So he may have been making it look better um, than the average person would be able to do. Uh, however, 
I'm still interested in the camera. Those are just two big caveats. And then the third one, there is three, three, three um, things to be aware of, three flaws, if you will, three points that aren't positives, they're negatives on the M50. The other one's the battery life. The battery's only rated at 235 shots, um, making it, I think, well, as EOS HD says, the battery life rates as one of the worst on record for a modern mirrorless camera. That's not a stat you want to be proud of. That's not something you're going to be bragging about. Um, that's very low. Now, if you're just shooting with the camera, just doing photography, um, I think keeping off the the EVF and keeping off the LCD, I know that's going to extend your life a lot. I know with my shooting currently, I'm reviewing the SL2, which I really like, by the way. But one of the ways to extend the battery life uh, enormously on the SL2 is to not be constantly using the LCD. And um, I did that simply because I did not have my spare batteries available yet. I have some coming, but I only had the one battery, and I was down at the Toronto Zoo doing some shooting for a review there on the SL2, and I just purposely knew that I needed, I wanted to keep that LCD closed. And I shot, I think, almost 500 shots most of the day at the zoo with the, the LCD mostly closed, and I still hadn't even budged one bar on the battery. There was no video. I was purposely shooting my video commentary with my the Panasonic LX10 so I didn't uh, affect the battery life. But I'm suspecting that the M50, you could do a similar thing to it. Now, if you're going to shoot video, you're really going to burn through the batteries. What you're going to want on the M50, if you're going to shoot video with this thing, is you're going to want an AC adapter. I have one plugged into the G85 right now. It's awesome. It gives you a little kind of dummy-like battery that goes into the battery compartment, and then it goes and plugs into the wall. So you don't even have to worry about the battery. That'll only work in a situation where you're indoors and have access to a plug, like I do right now with the G85, but it's fantastic. In the rest of situations, you could either, you can get really good, like Wasabi power batteries are awesome. Get some extras there for the M50. That's what I will be doing. But you could also, if you have that AC adapter, you can pull out the joiner plug because it's two pieces. The, uh, the little dummy battery has a little cable that comes off and then it plugs into the AC adapter. Well, you can also plug in a battery plate and use like one of the big Sony video batteries and that will last you a lot longer. So it's another option too. So not a deal killer on the battery. Um, most people will work around that. The 4K may be a deal killer for some people. Depends how important 4K is to you and how much video you do. That's a very intense crop. Again, you can work around it by shooting something like the 10 to 18 or the Sigma 8 to 16, and um, also the loss of dual pixel AF. Um, for me, both are disappointing, probably not deal killers. But I'll throw it back to you guys. Uh, what do you think? These three things I'm pointing out here, the battery life is, is, is very low, the heavy 2.56 times crop in 4K video, and then the fact that we don't get dual pixel AF. What do you think of that? Is it a deal killer for you? Um, Will you work around it? Um, do you think it's no big deal at all? Let me know in the comments below. I'm just curious to hear what your feedback is on these these three negatives, if you will, on the M50. Don't get me wrong. I'm still very interested in this camera. I may per actually purchase one. Uh, I'm going to review it first. I'm going to get one in for review. I'm going to review it first, and then I'll decide. But it does seem to have most of what I wanted in a 90D and in a much cooler-looking body. It'll be interesting to see if the rest of Canon's new APS-C bodies that come out, if they continue to have these uh, limitations in the 4K, if they have the heavy crop, the same crop, and if they have the um, lack of dual pixel AF. That may be a technical limitation. Maybe Canon hasn't figured out how to make dual pixel AF work when shooting 4K yet. It's the only thing I can think of. But, uh, well, maybe on an APS-C sensor, because I do believe it works on the 5D Mark IV. Maybe that's Canon just uh, giving us the finger and telling us, hey, if you want all of the goodness of 4K, move up to a more expensive body. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Let's hear your thoughts, your concerns. Is this an issue? Isn't it? What do you think? Canon M50, these are three things that I see as a negative, as problems. Is there something I've missed you guys want to add in? Let me know. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.